Tim, we're here at the conference, Physics of Fine Tuning in, in Crete. Um, I've been following fine tuning for uh, several decades. It's a, it's a theme of importance uh, in terms of potentially assessing deep reality. And I've noticed it, it, it changing from basically philosophers or theologians or science uh, theology debates um, to where mainstream physicists are now dealing with it. Um, looking at it from the implications of it in terms of uh, assuming it exists, uh, then people try to apply it in different ways. Uh, uh, how, as a philosopher of physics, do you see the objectives or the, uh, you know, the bad word of teleology in terms of fine-tuning? Well, I guess I think fine-tuning means that you have some observed physical structure that strikes you as something that requires some sort of explanation, which is always going to be a kind of tricky business because there are some things that happen just by coincidence or just accidentally or just by chance, which more or less means there's no further explanation to be had. Uh, so you have to first make a judgment about what looks like it would be odd if it were merely coincidental. Where would you be dissatisfied in labeling something simply uh, a matter of chance? So in the case of fine-tuning, you have the <clears throat> constants of nature or particular details about the laws of nature, but particularly the constants where people have been looking at how robust is are certain physical features of the universe under small changes in these constants. And what they found is that in a certain sense, if you change the constants, what intuitively seems like a small amount, although you have to discuss what, what small, small means, means right, right. Um, there are very dramatic changes in the physics. It's not merely that the physics is different, which you'd expect, um, but that you go from worlds that are very complicated, that have very interesting, detailed, complicated structures to physical worlds that are just gas or just neutrons. Uh, from which no interesting complex structures could be created. So that's the sort of thing that you think that seems odd to say that that particular feature of the physical universe was just accidental, right? That it should have any complexity at all. You need complexity to support life. You need complexity to support planetary systems. You need complexity to support so much that sure. we see around us. Um, now, you have to be a little careful about it because there are features of the universe, lots of them, that by the definition I just gave you are fine-tuned. That is, they're very, very sensitive to small changes. Um, an obvious example is, for example, your own existence. So that's really, yeah. really, yeah. really, really yeah. fine-tuned. That is, if we go back 13 billion years and move an electron, <laughs> by a meter, um, you wouldn't exist because it's a very chaotic kind of dynamics. Everything more or less had to be exactly the way it was in order for you to come into existence. So, and me and everybody else. So by this sort of formal definition of fine-tuned, the universe is extremely fine-tuned for that. But we don't think that's a, anything problematic. We just say all that follows from that is that your existence and my existence are sort of accidental um, it's like the traditional thing, if you hit a golf ball, the odds of landing on that one piece of grass is, yeah. is astronomical. Exactly. <laughs> but, it has but, but it's going to land somewhere, yeah. right? Or if you, you know, if, if you have a lottery, somebody's going to win, no matter yeah. how small the chances right. of that particular person winning. There's nothing wrong with saying, oh yeah, the fact that that particular person won, that's just chance, that's just coincidental. There's no deeper physical principle that, as it were, would right. tend to lead to that result. So it's, you have to look for those areas where potentially, you know, the phrase that's used is cries out for explanation. Exactly. And, that's right. Uh, the so-called cosmological constant, because it may be 50 digits or, or 120 digits uh, that's so close to zero but not zero. So if that is really required, then that cries out for right. explanation. Right. And, that, you know, you have to be always aware of that. There are things that might seem to cry out for explanation where we now think, Again, they're just coincidental. So there was a lot of discussion 
by Kepler and by later this guy Bode about the um, distances between the planets in the yeah, solar system. Right, and Kepler right. thought, oh, I can explain that in terms of putting the platonic solids <laughs> in between them, right? <laughs> so there are, that's why there are exactly six planets, Kepler <laughs> said, because there are exactly five <laughs> platonic solids and I can stick the five solids between, between the them and get the right, right distances. Uh, Bode found a, another kind of mathematical law or formula which the distances of the planet seem to satisfy, uh, mostly we would now say, no, it was, just, it was just coincidence. They could have ended up anywhere. If there's some simple formula that seems to fit them, that's just because there are lots of formulas. So you do always have to keep in mind whether you're on a wild goose chase trying to find a deeper explanation for something. Right. But let, let's go to, to let, let's assume that that there is a, a fine tuning, and, and we would agree on it that this this entity really is fine tuned um, at whatever the 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 range would be. But that we would all agree with, and cosmological right. constant seems to qualify, but maybe some uh, and some others do too. You know, then what? Because a lot of people will um, make. Um, uh, 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 We'll try to see the implications of that, and we'll try to induce what. And there are, you know, several categories of what people do. Um, some people, uh, some physicists might see fine tuning, and of course it has an explanation. Then there has to be some ultimate law that would, even though we don't see it now, that would force it to be that way, no matter what. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the necessity, and then the chance of a multiverse that everybody talks about. That if you generate an almost infinite number of possibilities, then this would be one, and then we have the selector effect. And then, of course, there's teleological explanations, uh, uh, theistic ones and, and non-theistic uh, teleological explanations. Uh, is, is that a legitimate um, uh, analysis of what follows from what would really be fine-tuning? Right, so if you, you have something that appears to be fine-tuned, that you're convinced you need some account of why these particular numbers turned out the way they are. Um, you have several options. One is a multiverse where all kinds of possibilities actually exist, and then, as you say, a, an anthropic selection effect that only in certain of the possibilities do observers. Can the observers exist? So you're not surprised that you as an observer happen to be in a place where observers can exist. That, that's a perfectly good explanation, assuming, and then the question is, do you have reason to believe there is a multiverse? What's your evidence for that? Yeah. Um, another possibility is to say that there's some kind of feedback mechanism or self-regulating mechanism, which tends to produce this result from a wide variety of initial conditions. So if you were to take the uh, cosmological constant being close to but not exactly zero. You could certainly imagine, not that I can provide it to you off the top of my head, but you could imagine a kind of feedback mechanism which tends to equilibrate at exactly zero. So in, in, as it were, if time goes to infinity, it'll uh, end at zero. Uh, but it takes a while to equilibrate. Uh, so uh, you're not too surprised to find a number that's close to zero but not exactly yeah. zero. This requires thinking of something that you thought of as a constant as actually being variable. And the variable, the value of the variable being governed by some equations. Um, you could imagine a perfectly good explanation like that. Um, sometimes I give this example. You know if you drop a, 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 an object through an atmosphere or through the water and it has long enough to fall, it'll eventually hit a terminal velocity where the force pulling it down is exactly balanced by the resistance of the medium, and then it'll just fall at a constant rate. So suppose we lived on a huge rock that happened to be falling through a medium, and we, de we uh, uh, evolved during this time, and we start doing physics. So we start measuring all these details of the rock. We go inside it, we figure out its total mass. We have a theory that says there's something like a gravitational force and we calculate from these very complicated details of the rock how much gravitational force there should be on it. And then another group of people 
start measuring the surface of the rock and all the little protrusions and the um, resistance that they're going to get from the air. And they do an entirely different set of calculations on an entirely different piece of physics. And they say, look, our number, which is the resistance, exactly matches this other number. <laughs> That must be fine tuning. Mm -hmm. How could it be? Because you know these are completely different calculations from a con mm -hmm. completely different basis. And the answer is there's no fine tuning there. It's just that this is a kind of homeostatic system that naturally seeks out a balance point between these two things, and then will stay there or near there. Again, you wouldn't expect the the numbers to match exactly. You'd expect them to be near each other. There could be fluctuations. So that's a kind of physical mechanism that could lead to results that would appear to you to be fine-tuned and by expanding the physics, by taking things that you thought to be constants and making them variable, by giving them a dynamics, you can give a perfectly good explanation for that. Um, the theistic, I, I tend to think of a theistic proposal as another kind of explanation. I'm perfectly willing to uh, imagine it. You then say there's another kind of homeostatic mechanism or a mechanism that tends to lead to a certain end now going through intentions and design and so on but as with any other theory you have to ask you have to articulate the exact nature of that mechanism and then ask what evidence do you have that it exists uh, and i think the design hypothesis just turns out not to have any evidence in favor of it and is rather hard to articulate what a designer would be like that wouldn't get you into even more trouble, right? If you say, uh, how do I understand the, these numbers being similar to each other and I have to postulate to explain it a mechanism even more <laughs> obscure and bizarre and, and uh, inexplicable that I'm not making any progress in that direction.